I mean, it's unfortunate. Anytime you have a brother that can, um, you know, that's hurt, um, obviously he can play this game and injuries are part of it. And it just sucks for him because he's been having a pretty good uh, training camp and uh, he's really been taking that next step. So for him, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably a little annoying, but at the same time, that's why you got depth. And we have that. Obviously, we have Denny still out. So we're kind of handicapped right now at three, but it's preseason, so there's that. Wes said that it could open the door for Johnny to play a little bit more. Um, what, what do you think about that opportunity for him? No, I mean, I think it's an opportunity, you know, uh, for, for all of us. You know, obviously for him, it's big, but. You know, they always say in the league, you know, you're one injury away from starting and then you're one injury away from being in rotation, right? And that's the type of situation Johnny's in or whoever coach decides to put there. So, you know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, for him is just attention to detail and just that learning curve because coming into the NBA, there is a learning curve and he's still uh, trying to get there. So. Okay, uh, they always talk about like a West Coast trip or a long run can help galvanize the team, but this was to the extreme where you go that far. What was the biggest thing you kind of took away from a group body perspective? Uh, you know, you no, know, we got we got we got really good chemistry right now. So I think for for that standpoint, being overseas, being together was good for us. We all went to dinners, obviously, being in a different country, not knowing the language. A lot of us are uh, tied together more naturally, but. Uh, you know, I think for the most part, especially if you look at that last game for those three quarters, you know, we were clicking. We, we felt good, uh, you know, playing the right way. Defense, you know, still got ways to go. But uh, I think everything from that trip, uh, collectively from the team, was uh, trending positive. So what do you think about Post Malone wearing your jersey? Oh, that's my guy. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't exactly know he was going to uh, pull up in it and wear it. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, those are my good friends, so it was really cool. And uh, to, I got to ask you about the guy in, in Japan who was wearing the, the pink sweater. I mean, it seemed like you were pretty impressed by that. I was pretty impressed. You know, it just, uh, you know, I, when, I, when I wore the pink sweater, I never really thought about it being this global viral or this phenomenon. I just wear clothes. And, uh, you know, it's just really cool to see you have fans all over the world and uh, people that admire you. Uh, very flattering for me. So, while wow, we're talking about clothes, did you see Stewie's new, Brianna Stewart's new uh, Puma shoes? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, I love them. They're great. You know, she's the first woman to have a have a shoe. Uh, well, in maybe, huh? In a long time. In a long time, okay, in a long time. But uh, she deserves it. She's one of the greatest basketball players ever, and um, you know, love her design. So it's sweet. Awesome. And what do you think about playing with Brewery in Japan? You guys had an opportunity to do that. Is that something you guys want to do going forward? Uh, I mean, obviously we're teammates, but uh, I mean, no, yeah, we're together. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think it was great for Rui to be in Japan and play in front of his home crowd, and you know, we got him in there for a lot of minutes and uh, allowed his home crowd to see him and feel him, and I think that was really important. And I think it was great for his confidence too. You know, you think about him, he, didn't, he had an up and down year last year, uh, came in halfway, and I bet to start the season off playing in front of his home crowd really gave him that confidence too. So I think it was great for his, his morale. Do you like the fit between you guys on the court? Um, I do. You know, I think, um, you know, it just all depends on uh, the matchup also and how willing we are uh, to, to defend at the same time. You know, obviously we're both big guys. You know, I, I prefer to play the four. I'm sure he likes to play the four too. But, um, you know, if we can defend, then it doesn't matter because basketball position is. So I think, you know, there's a lot of variables, but, uh, you know, coaches handle it. Can't handle it so, yeah. Like yeah. How would you are more comfortable playing the three or the four? Oh, uh, four. Yeah, four. For for those of us who aren't experts, experts, what's the difference? I mean, what what makes the difference? In the uh, the difference is I just have an advantage on fours. Um, you know, typically fours are are used to guard guys uh, uh, of my skill set from the standpoint of being able to uh, you know play pick and roll or grab it off the rim and, and have to, to match up with me uh, attacking closeouts. You know, defending the, at, at that spot. So, you know, there's just a lot of variables that I like.
You seem to do a lot of passing on the move. You yeah. know, saw like in the first game, the spin move and the pass to Morris. Yeah. What, what's kind of your approach in that regard? And, and is it, did you have to work on like throwing those passes accurately because you are on the move? Um, you know, I think uh, I just I just play the game of basketball the right way. I try to, uh, you know, if the right pass is there and the right play is there, I try to make it nine times out of 10 times. Um, you know, that's kind of how I've been taught to play basketball. And I think that's the best way to play basketball because when you're sharing it, um, you know, not being a thirsty type of player trying to, you know, get to the rim or shoot every time, you know, it leaves the defense guessing a little bit, you know, because you can't pass. So, um, you know, I just like to see my teammates succeed. So, how would you grade the dinner that Rui organized? Danny, uh, uh, oh, that Rui organized? Oh, it was great. Great food. Uh, I mean, we're in Japan, so, you know, they had the best wagyu I probably ever had, so give them an A minus. <laughs> Can you take us through the drill that you guys are doing at the end? Is it just first to five at every spot? Uh, yeah, we were playing first to five. Uh, we tied today, me and Monte, KP lost. Yeah, K <laughs> KP lost, so everybody knows. I remember him. Oh uh, yeah, it's been real good. Um, it's good to always have, you know, somebody that's been, you know, from the past to stuff to come in and just give as much experience about the game as possible, you know, and I'm soaking as much wisdom up as I possibly can because as everybody knows, he was one, you know, one of the guys that was here that was dominant when John was here, you know, when Brad was in his young years and whatnot. So it's all good, you know, I'm really enjoying the time to be around him, you know, it's always good to be around somebody that got a screen named after them. So. I was gonna say, was that the main focus? Talking yeah, about screens? it was the main focus at the end of practice today. Mainly, you know, most of the workouts and stuff that I've been really just talking to him with and stuff like that, so on and so forth, is just like, you know, shooting the ball a little bit more with my offhand, you know, setting screens, a lot of getting guys open, running the floor, just being a dominant big on the floor mainly. That's the main thing. Yeah, has he taught you the, the Igor tot screen? Yeah, he has. You know, I've, they've always, you know, we've always worked on it time and time again throughout, you know, the time that I've been here, ever since I've got here and stuff. But, you know, to actually have, you know, the person come here and teach it, you know, it's something, it's something that you really want to, you know, have in your back pocket for sure. You know, he taught me a lot of stuff today with the Gortat screen. So I'm probably going to try to use it throughout the season for sure. He's a heftier guy than you. Do you talk about how to use your size maybe efficiently or what's that like working with a, a kind of weighty or big, I guess? Um, my thing, you know, he from, you know, he's a foreign guy, you know, big guy, of course. Uh, <laughs> So he's going to talk about, you know, how I need to, you know, add size and whatnot. But at the same time, you know, it's good for, you know, a guy like me, especially like my size, to be able to learn the things like that because I can yeah. do that too. You know, set the Gortat screen so on and so forth and still catch lobs and whatnot too. So it'll all be good. You know, I'm still working on the size thing, of course. You know, that comes with the working stuff in the weight room. But at the same time, you know, it's always good that a versatile guy like me can be able to set screens like I used to set screens, really. To get guys open, like Brad getting him down, he'll get him to the basket wide open layups. That'll, you know, that'll sooner or later open up the floor to where guys will come in, help off. We got we got spray out threes, you know, that'll make open baskets for me, open baskets for Brad. It's just like, you know, a domino effect, basically. When walking through it at the end with Brad also there, I guess, how does that just help? Okay, well, this is exactly who I need to be setting it for. He mm -hmm. can give me input as well. Uh, that's, communication is key. You know, you can't go wrong without, with, you know, talking about certain scenarios and how this will play out and how that will play out. It's always good. So it was real good for me because it's always already has me thinking on it even before I even walked off the floor today. It's something that I'm really going to keep in my back pocket to where I can try to learn day in, day out, get film on it, figure it out, watch highlights of Gortat, of course, and how the things that he used to do with John, with Brad, so on and so forth. That's, that's the type of stuff that will help me out for sure to help the team be successful. What's the difference between learning something from or hearing that type of stuff from a coach and hearing it from a former player? Well, I mean, with the coaches, you know, they teach it for sure. But sometimes when it comes from like certain players and whatnot, they've been in those situations. And it's like experience teaches a lot, you know, because they can walk through certain scenarios that they've been in and they can implement that into like the game today basically and just walk through it you know visual learning and hands-on learning is somewhat is the best type of learning for me really and it helps me think on more it helps me really just get to the point to where i can have it in you know the back of my mind to where i can come out day in day out and really just think about it you know and figure out ways how i can implement that to the game and help us out on the floor offensively defensively whatever
Absolutely. Happy belated birthday. Oh, oh yeah. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How did uh, you get to spend it over there? Ah, I spent it with uh, my wife, of course. We had a real good time. We enjoyed it. Uh, we, did a, we did a couple of things. We went out for ramen. Of course, she bought me a bunch of anime stuff. I didn't really get a chance to go to any anime stores. It's a bummer, I know. Um, but all in all, you know, I really enjoyed it. Just being able to spend my birthday in a whole nother part of the world is something that a kid could dream of. You know, you could ask me at 15 if I would ever thought I would have been in Japan on my birthday, I would have told you no. <laughs> How would you uh, grade the dinner that Rui organized? I was good. I liked it a lot. It was it was a different variety of foods that was brought out in the hibachi, uh, hibachi restaurant that uh, we went to. You know, um, it was a bit different when it came to sauce and stuff. I'm a bit, I'm a bit more of a salty guy and then a sweet guy. So on, on, other than that, it was great. You know, I really not nah, don't complain about food. So. <laughs> I wanted to get back to screen. Mm -hmm. Is it harder for you to know how to screen or like when to screen in the office? Mm, I say how to screen because you know you know when to screen because if a guy tells you to close the screen, if you know when to screen during like in a certain point of the shot clock. I say how to screen because you know it's a lot of de it's a lot of real versatile defensive guys in this league. You know they're quick, they slide their feet well, and there's a lot of strong defensive guys at point guard too that are guarding. You know most of the time, the guard that is coming to receive the screen, or whatever. So when it comes to that, guys are slipping under the screens. You know, getting over the screen. You got to make sure you get guys off of the ball handler just so they can get downhill on the screen, so on and so forth. Because the more you can get the ball handle open, the more it'll be better for you. Because then X5 is going to have to make a decision. So you know times down the floor whenever it comes to me setting the right screen or the wrong screen. Is it more about body positioning or like the angles of the screen? I would say it's a little bit of both, you know, depending on what part of the floor you're on. Depending you know, on if you're coming from the bottom or the top, you know, you always got to get that right angle to make sure we can get a guy, you know, over the top, downhill every time. You had some uh, nice assists in those first two preseason mm -hmm. games. Has passing been a big emphasis for you? Yes. Um, today, just like um, what Coach was talking to me about, just let me just keep my poise at the top of the floor. You know, it's a lot of times where I've been seeing myself on film and whatnot, you know, getting the ball ripped for me or guys being over aggressive when it comes to me having the ball up top and stuff. So being able to really just withstand that pressure, defensive pressure, and just holding my poise in certain situations like that is what helped me, you know, make those passes. And just really just having the confidence to make those passes. You know, once we we have the right offense to where it's set up those passes and the back cuts and stuff, and I get and it gets guys open, so got to hit them. What's the what's it like learning the timing of NBA defenses as far as you know your own passes go? Oh, I mean it's just like clockwork. It's it's perfect. You know I'm always like I said I'm always a hands-on learner. So being able to learn something in that given situation is perfect for me because I can really just have layover from you know the workout or the practice or whatever we did to really just talk about that certain situation and bring it to the game. And that helps us out a lot because it opens the floors. It I can't even talk. It opens the floor up for us a lot. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I assume when you guys are doing live stuff, you're matched up with KP a lot yeah. defensively, I mm -hmm. guess. Just what has that challenge been like for you to try and guard somebody of his? You know, it's been a real set? good challenge because, you know, most of the time whenever we play against like a pick and pop big, you know, of course um, KP is a pick and pop big. It comes to the point to where it helps us to where we have to communicate a lot more, whether if we're having to switch if I'm too far down the floor or if I get the guard back in front on the pick and roll or anything in general and getting back to my man and being able to, you know, kind of like withstand, you know, a guy going downhill, playing defense, moving my feet and defending without fouling. So those are like all the things that tie into it. And that's some of the things that I'm learning this, you know, training camp and whatnot. And I think I'm doing a pretty good job at it right now. Yeah. What were some of your takeaways that you like from your time in Japan games? In Japan oh. games? Like, what do you mean? Some of your takeaways maybe from your offensive end, the defensive. Oh, with the team? Um, really just, you know, having the confidence to take certain shots. Um, in my opinion, you know, there's times where I've been in a position to where I have can easily, you know, make a shot and do certain things. But I'm always looking for the next action in the offense and whatnot when I can be the next action, so on and so forth. So really just, you know, building the confidence of taking certain, you know, making certain moves, going to the basket, and being able to really just, you know, on the defensive, yeah, defensive end, is really just guard, you know, multiple positions. Because there was a time, uh, I think at the end of the last game that we played in Japan, where I was playing the four, because Taj had came in, and I was going the four, you know, just really being comfortable with guarding one through five, and at the same time on the offensive end, it's just like taking the shots that, you know, are given to me, instead of, you know, looking that shot away, going to find the next action. You said it was a long flight. 
Any Switch recommendation games? Switch games, recommendations, uh, Super Smash Brothers, of course. I play Super Mario Odyssey a lot, you know. Really just any Mario game. You know, you can't go wrong with Mario, you know, that's the OG. <laughs> um, but other than that, uh, there's a good game coming out called Bayonetta 3. You know, if you play Bayonetta 1 and 2, I'm pretty sure y'all know what I'm talking uh, about. What? Bayonetta? Bayonetta. Okay. Yeah, it's like a game about a witch, you know. Yeah, so it's it's a little dope little game. If y'all ever get a chance, look it up. You know, don't be you know under the age of whatever it says because it's a bit of a explicit Whoa. game, in my opinion. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Of course. <laughs>